It's been exactly four months since I found out that I have stage four cancer. Four months since my doctor sat me down and told me, if you do nothing, you'll be dead in 60 days. So, so far I've doubled that number, which once again seems to indicate that something I'm doing is working. Either it's the treatment that I'm receiving, either it's the diet changes that I've made, either it's the vitamin C that I'm taking, or, you know, a bunch of other small things, or maybe it's just the fact that I'm just too fucking stubborn to die. I know that is the most important thing. I've had a lot of time to think in the last four months. I've been thinking a lot more in the last couple of days. And I know that the biggest determining factor in what happens and whether I survive this or not is the mindset, is what I believe will happen. And I also know that, especially four months ago, now, maybe a little less true, but four months ago, I knew there was no way that I was mentally strong enough to just purely do this out of willpower, out of mindset, out of belief. I knew it was about 80% mindset, belief, faith, all those things, everything going on in my head, and about 20% what I physically do. So the treatments that I get, the life changes that I make, the alternative treatments that I try, all those things. And now, I don't know, I'm getting at the point where, you know, a few days ago I got the results of my latest PET scan and a lot of the tumors shrunk. A few of them got bigger, but not dramatically. And a lot of the tumors shrunk, some of them drastically. So that seems like good news, even though it's mixed results. To me, it sounds like good news. So I'm, I'm, it just reminds me, okay, what you're doing is working. The problem is what I'm doing physically may be interfering with my belief and my mindset. And what I mean by that is the biggest thing that I've done is the shift in diet. I haven't really gone into much detail about exactly what I'm doing. But the gist of it is everything is now organic. <coughs> I've removed all forms of sugar, so absolutely no sweets, as well as no like of starchy carbs. So no rice, no bread, no pasta, none of those things. And also the hardest part for me has been no fruits because I've, I love fruits, especially in the last few years. I just had less and less hunger for desserts. But I just enjoyed fruits, like ripe fruits. I just enjoyed them so much more. And that's been one of the hardest things in the last four months, having to give up fruits. And it's just, you know, I have a very good source of motivation. Staying alive is a very good motivation. However, I know that a very important part of my recovery is not just the mindset, but also taking care of myself treating myself with love and care, something that I've had a very hard time doing my entire life. I've become very good at challenging myself. You know, I've run ultra marathons, done walking challenges, isolated myself in complete darkness for five days. I've done extreme physical challenges. I've become very, very, very good at that. I've become good at being uncomfortable or sorry, at being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. However, taking care of myself and respecting myself, <coughs> that's always been kind of difficult. I think it's a mixture of, you know, what society teaches us as a whole and the way that I grew up with my parents and the whole they'd never told me they love me thing. And then recently realizing they didn't love me unconditionally. They loved me because it was their duty. They were my parents. And they loved me because I was their child, but they didn't love me because I was me. They would have loved any other kid that was in my position, that was their child. So it's not about them loving me for me being me. It's about loving them, loving me because I was their child. That was their job. That's how it works. And I've repeated that cycle in my life. I keep pushing myself and challenging myself and treating myself the way that not necessarily my parents treated me. But the way that the way they treated me conditioned me to believe I deserve to be treated. That's a very different thing. 
So the good thing of this is I've managed to challenge myself and push myself to extremes that a lot of people haven't. There's people out there, like David Goggins is an example, who've pushed themselves so much further than me. But I have pushed myself far enough to know, like, okay, I can handle a lot. The hard part has always been taking care of myself. As an example, when I first found out I had cancer, I recently started running again before that. And when I first found out I had cancer, my reaction was, hey, let's run 10 kilometers. That way I can say I ran 10 kilometers while having stage four cancer in my lungs. Which, from a challenge perspective and storytelling perspective, sounds really inspiring. But when you think about it, that's really fucked up. Just to put it in perspective, me wanting to challenge myself doesn't sound so bad. But imagine a kid who just found out he has stage four cancer and my initial reaction is, hey, motherfucker, go run 10 kilometers. Like, never in a million years would I say that. Yet that was my initial reaction when I found out that I have stage four cancer. How fucked up is that? So all that to come back to what I was saying. All that to come back to saying the diet and everything else that I'm doing, I'm doing because I want to take care of myself and stay alive. But at the same time, my body is telling me I enjoy eating fruit. I enjoy fresh fruits. I really love that. Yet, I'm not allowing myself to do that. And I'm conflicted. I've been conflicted lately because part of me is like, why are you making yourself miserable? You don't know what's going to happen. Maybe you're going to die soon. Do you really want to spend the last months of your life forcing yourself to be miserable because you can't have fruits? Yet at the same time, on the other perspective, it's, well, what if that's what's keeping me alive? I'm loving myself so much that I'm forcing myself to do what's right, what I need to do to stay alive. So there's this dichotomy inside, this never-ending struggle, this never-ending uncertainty. And at this point, I honestly don't know what is the best option. <clears throat> because I know that the mindset is super powerful. I've read stories and spoken to people who were in situations similar to me. Maybe not as extreme, but they were in a situation where they had stage four cancer, their doctors gave them a certain amount of time to live, and they survived. Some of them simply out of sheer willpower. So I know how powerful that can be. But at the same time, I don't know if I personally am strong enough, mentally, emotionally, inside, if my soul, if you will, is strong enough to heal myself. Because it's, th it's two things. It's like, okay, part of it is I need to love myself so much and do whatever I need to to stay healthy and stay alive. Yet at the same time, I need to surrender completely, fully. <coughs> and I don't mean surrender as in give up. I mean surrender as in surrender to the process. There is a reason why this is happening to me. And is the reason for me to keep being stubborn and keep making my life more difficult and just keep pushing and pushing and pushing no matter how uncomfortable or painful or crappy it is until I survive or is the point of this for me to surrender and accept everything except okay maybe I'm going to die I am going to make the most of this experience whether I have a couple weeks a couple months a couple years or another hundred years to live I don't know but I've always felt especially in the last few years I need to get to a point in my life where I have to reach this point of complete surrender. Not try to control everything. Like there's a reason I've never done drugs in my life. Okay, first of all, when I get tired, I act as dumb as someone who has done drugs. But there's also the fact that I've always had this fear of losing control. Because of everything that happened when I was young, I'm like, I need to keep control of everything. That is the only way that I can control what's going on in my life. Without that, I have nothing. So I don't know what the solution is. I honestly don't. But here at the four month mark, well, first of all, I'm grateful to be alive. But second of all, I'm just really uncertain what the right move is. Because I want to get to that point of complete surrender. Because I know that's going to be so liberating. And I know it's going to help a lot. But at the same time, I don't want to give up on something that is potentially the thing keeping me alive. So I, I don't know. I'll keep you updated in the future, but right now, 
I honestly don't know. 